Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by WordPress. Your customers want to find you. Build a WordPress.com website and help them connect with your business. Get 15% off any new plan purchase at WordPress.com slash know how. And by Hover. Register a domain name with Hover and build your online brand today. Go to Hover.com slash twit and save 10% off your first purchase. Today on Know How. For the control freaks in your life. Control your kids, control your home, and control your photos. Welcome to Know How. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Balasser. And I am Mother Megan Maroney. That's right. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we're going to take you into the bosom of technology and pour all the knowledge like you're a little tech infant. But Megan... (laughs) We, we cooked up this idea between us that we needed uh, a control-heavy episode. Yeah. Well, I had some ideas for you, and I gave you a big, long mm-hmm. list, and you said, let's do it all. Let's do it all, yeah. yeah Megan's like, but that was like three episodes. But all right, we'll do okay. it all in one. Yes. Because yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's not going to run long, because we never do that in Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, But you specifically, you said, look, I, I'm, I'm a mother. I'm a parent. I'm trying to be a good parent. And I want to instill in my kids that they should be responsible. I want to be able to control my house so that I can make sure that everything's okay, everything is safe. And I also want to do things like protect my digital memories. So that gave us this idea of the control freak episode of know-how. We're going to show people how to make sure their kids are doing what they should be doing when they're connected. We're going to make sure that uh, our homes can be automated up to the point that the technology currently allows. And then we're also going to go through some photo tips so that we can actually organize our uh, our digital memories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now let's start, Megan, with I think something that you are really good at, and that is your kids. Here's a problem. I've heard this a lot doing counseling where you have parents who are at their wit's end because my kid doesn't sleep until 4 in the morning, they've got school at 8 o'clock, and yet they're always on their devices and they don't. they never listen to me. What are your motherhood tips and techniques for making that stop? Uh, well, my biggest tip is never get your kids a device. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Yeah. Thank you. We're done. Uh, Thank you. Never. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs> and you're welcome. Uh, not practical. You can't do sadly. that. Sadly. Yeah. Sadly. You have to, they have to eventually get devices. So wait as long as you can. And then uh, my advice to you is just to remind you that parenting is not for the weak. Yeah. It is hard. It is hard to, uh, it is struggle every day with mm-hmm. devices. And every parent, if they're not struggling, that means their kids are probably on devices all day long it's it is a struggle and you have to do it and so I have a few tips the first one is very basic you don't, you don't have to install anything I like this. on your computer mm-hmm. you can just sort of keep track of how long your kids have been using apps and what they've been using and it's very easy uh, it's all in the settings on your iPad. I, oh, we didn't say that most of my stuff, I'm yeah. going to be obviously talking about iPhones and iPads. And I'm going to do Android and multi-platform. Right. Yeah. So you can control in different ways. Pretty much everything. So so starting with an iPad or an iPhone, you just go into the settings. So we can take a look at this uh, iPad if you can. Uh, and let's go into the settings. And then we go to, you wouldn't... Yeah, let's turn the brightness a little bit down so people can see it a tiny tad better. There we All go. Right. So into settings, then you wouldn't expect this, but you go, is that good? The, oh, yeah. Okay. Battery. Battery? Battery. Parental controls and battery? This isn't parental controls. Uh, you probably know about the parental controls. I'll go over those after this. This is kind of a secret tip. So here it is. Uh, here's what the battery has been using. Oh, okay. So you can do last 24 okay, hours or last seven days. So uh, the last seven days, uh, my kids have been playing Egg Incorporated, YouTube, Minecraft. Sheets is probably me. They don't do a lot of uh, Google Sheets. <laughs> They're um, making a lot of spreadsheets, Megan, Yeah. So late at night? It's not only percentage, you can see time. So you can see that 6.9 hours in the last seven days, my children have been playing Egg Incorporated. 2.1 hours uh, on YouTube, 1.8 hours in the background. 
uh, 1.2 hours Minecraft. So you can get an idea of this, and you can even see uh, if your kid was like, you know, oh, I've I've only been on the uh, I've only been on it for five five minutes. You can see the the usage time since last charge. This is pretty fully charged, 100%. You can't see, but you know, if your kid is in the room and they're like, no, I just I now, just got it. How can they reset this again? Again? No. Oh, okay. So this is really something like. They can't lie to you because the, the device is going to tell you the truth. Yeah. Okay, I like that. So that's for like teenagers that you're having conversations with. Obviously, it starts with conversations. Here's what I want you to do. Here's why I want you to spend less time on your device. It's not just because I'm your mother and I said so, although they it's will healthy. think that. Yeah it's, yeah, it's and there have been studies. I mean, there have been long-term at this mm -hmm. point studies about specifically the amount of screen time uh, and its correlation, not necessarily causation, but its correlation to the rise in depression among kids. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. There's no technology that's gonna replace parenthood. There's no device that you're gonna buy that suddenly, okay, now the problem's taken care of. You still gotta put in the time and the effort, and it, it's hard, and parenthood is very, very hard. However, what we can at least do is not make the technology make that job impossible. Mm -hmm. This is a good start, and, and again, this this isn't, overt, this is not active, this is not you watching them all the time, this is just saying, hey look, you gotta be honest with me. Mm -hmm. if, if you tell me that you're gonna spend an hour on this app and then you spend five hours, you're breaking the trust in this right. relationship. And this is this helps. People might think of this as spying, but no, that's just that's just good parenting. Right? Yeah, I'm not saying just keep track of this and just go oh, well, look how much <laughs> time they've spent on Minecraft. It's a conversation, an ongoing yeah. co conversation. Like, how long did you read today? Like, how long did you play outside? Like, let's have a balance. And um, that's what that's about. So the restrictions is more really restricting. And this is things, my yeah. kids are 12 and 14 and they yeah. can get around these pretty easily. Uh, but that is under, let's see, general and then uh, restrictions. You can see how often I use restrictions. And then I can enable restrictions there. And then I yeah, will- You got the super parent password. You can enter yeah. a password. <laughs> don't, don't, don't show it because her kids might watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can uh, you can totally uh, allow. This is what you can allow, and right. then you can block if you wanna. You don't want them to listen to this podcast so they can figure out what you're doing. And you can um, that's you can pretty do meta. that, or you know you can block uh, explicit content. You know that this is all uh, depending on your own parents. You know parental rules right. and all of your family's right. uh, values. This is stuff that, you know, if you don't want them to take photos, if yeah, you don't want it's to It's really them. fine control. I mean, it's basically every aspect of the iPad, yes. from the camera to the individual apps that can run. As a parent, you can give a device to your family, to everyone in your family, and say, these are the things that you can use, and these are the things you can't. I like that. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. But, Megan, what if I wanted to get, oh, I don't know, a bit more active? Because sometimes you need a dramatic demonstration of parenthood. Should we um, do? Should we do that now? Should Let's we do, do like a like a role playing? Like yeah. Okay. I'm, so I'm I'm your kid. I, okay. I just played with the snake for the last five right. hours, but I'm supposed to be going to bed right now. So I'm but I'm I'm like, hey, no, mom mom doesn't know what I need to do. Yeah. I need to play some Minecraft. So, so I'm, I'm in my room, and you think I'm studying, but actually I'm I'm, like, I'm exploring the world, and I'm you know harvesting pigs and cows and such, and then. You know, I'm like, ah, mom doesn't know anything. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And, uh, oh, wait. What? What? Wait, what, <laughs> wait, what just happened? Uh, your Minecraft went away. Aww. This is an app called Our Pact. O-U-R-P-A-C-T. So we have a pact. You and I, our family has a pact. We have rules that we follow. That means uh, whatever rules we've decided on, maybe that means no mm -hmm. screens after nine o'clock. Maybe that means no screens during a certain amount of time while you're supposed to be doing your homework. Maybe that means no screen time when you're being sassy. So if I had said like, get off Minecraft yep. and you didn't, then I could just go in and say, and uh, you can take a look at what I just did. I just blocked it. So I could say, um, I'm gonna block it until- Oh, I like that, it gives 50, you time options. Until I say so, until you get your act together. This is the new time minutes, out. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 oh. minutes, one hour. You can, whoa, you were bad. Uh, 12 <laughs> hours Until there. further notice. So uh, that's what you're allowed to do. And then you can also set schedules. I don't know if you can see. Well, what I like about this is it doesn't just turn the app off. 
the app disappears. I can't relaunch it until you grant me access. Right. So uh, you can do it app by app. Uh, it's a free service for what I just showed you, but the um, paid Things service, like the subscription Minecraft. service, uh, you can turn off because you know it gets all away from all the good stuff. Except you could still uh, text. You well, I, I like this here. Messages. Go ahead and give it back to me. G uh, grant me access again. Okay. And this is what I like. Once you've granted me access, Minecraft pops back up. Yay! I get my I get okay. my applications back. You have to find it because I have a lot of apps yeah, there. Yeah, where do you go? Hmm, is this here somewhere? Yeah, well, there, it, there it is. You get and Minecraft they just, they just and get you the get the Twit app back. You get it all the good stuff Boom. back. That's actually quite. And is this a free app or do I have to pay for this? Uh, there are some features that are free, like okay. the one that I just showed you, and then there's just a subscription that you can go app to app, and you can shut off texting, and you can maybe just shut like off uh, Snapchat and leave Minecraft. Um, and there's, there was, when I first used this about a year ago, what it would do, because there's a lot, there's, there's, there's some setup involved. You have to um, uh, give it, it its, its remote management, and okay. iOS doesn't really right. necessarily. Right, you have to turn that on. That's off by default. Right. And so you have to do that, and then you have to back it up in iTunes, and then you have to uh, do a bunch of stuff. And then it used to be that it would scramble all your apps when you were done. So I don't know about your, you, but my children are very, like... They're particular uh, about where everything everything's is. Everything's in little folders. Yeah. And when I turn this on and turn it back on, on turn, you know, turned it off, turned it back on, and all their apps were all in different no, folders. That's a feature I wish was built into the operating yeah. system. And that is that is a incredibly powerful parental feature. What is, the, what is the device running right now? And then give you the option to disable it for X amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Apple, if you're listening, steal that app. And uh, Android has an app like that. It's called Family Link. Right, same and, idea. And, but you can, if you have an iPhone and your kids have Android tablets, you can, uh, I have that here. So you can set that up on your iPhone and to control their Android tablets. Unfortunately, you can't, control any iOS devices. It's a Google app and that's where they've drawn the line. Mom's allowed to have an, an iPad, but those kids, that next generation, they're going to get them uh, hooked to their Android phone. So Jason Howell uses this. He loves it. Um, it shows yeah. how long the kids have been uh, on there. It gives them little, you know, time allowances, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So Family Link, they just upgraded it recently. Uh, so, and I have one more tip. Okay. And that is you put the devices when kids' friends come over, put them in a certain place. And my kids' friends have, uh, their friend Jacob has what he calls a a, uh, a parking lot, oh. a phone parking lot. So whenever they go over to his house, they have to put in the parking lot. But what we have, we upped the um, ante, it's a gas station. Okay. All <laughs> so right. make I, it more appealing. I don't know appealing. where you're going with this, but all right. <laughs> make it more appealing for the kids by setting up uh, lots of USB lightning cables or USB-C cables or to, you know micro USB cables, whatever it needs to charge their phones and devices. You want them in one place, okay. and you want them uh, and you want them to have the benefit of getting charged at that time too. So right. instead of just a parking lot, park your devices, make it a gas station. You know this that's actually a tip that I got from Owen JJ Stone uh -huh. uh, in his house. One of the things that he does is there are no mobile devices in people's bedrooms. Mm. There's a charging station where it's a gas station. Mm -hmm. All the devices go before bed, uh, and you know he said I bought a five dollar alarm clock, and that's next to each each person's bed because it it removes that that temptation to oh it's two in the morning I just woke up to get a glass of water oh, let's check Twitter I'm awake for the next three hours, yes. uh, and you know when you do that when you take the device out of the bedroom good things happen. People sleep more, they, they you know, have more restful sleep, and then they don't, they're not always connected. They don't have that screen anxiety of, oh, I might have just missed a post on Facebook. Uh, I, I like that. And again, that's about parenting because uh, adults like mobile devices next to their beds as much as kids. Well, and we did that. We had our gas station. It was downstairs in the den. And then uh, when I checked the settings, I realized that um, some little fairy hmm. in the night might have been leaving hmm. their bedroom to use their device. So now the gas station is in our room because, um, and I, you know, your mileage may vary with what, the what gas station in the den. You know, at uh, like a, a drug stores like Walgreens, they put the uh, the over the counter drugs that are a bit more, you know, potent uh -huh. behind those plastic screens with the locks. And, but they, they don't guard it from the side. <laughs> Have you well, ever done that? No, it's true. <laughs> well, you're joking, and I know it's funny, your joke, but I do, these devices are addictive. They're yeah, oh, addictive crazy, yes. substances, yeah. and we're handing them over to very young children. And I think we're in a phase now that we will, in five or ten years, be out of. And I think that parents um, in ten years will say, oh, 
who, why did those parents hand over those addictive substances to their seven-year-olds? We see it at the high school that I'm at. Um, uh, it's, it's phone anxiety. You'll see kids walking around campus, and they've got their phones in their hands, and they don't realize it, but they're like, they're basically stroking it. It's, it's, like a, it's like a safety blanket. They have their phone. They know, okay, I, I can always check something. I can always check something. To ask them to put it into their backpack just that far away, you, you, fee, you see them freak out, and they want to have it in their hands or in their pocket, immediately accessible. That's not good. I mean, that's not good behavior. No, and I do it sometimes, too. I have I, that yeah, part. I do My, it You know, time. our brains are developed, yep. Yep. and so we have a little <laughs> more... Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> they should be. <laughs> Theoretically, our brains should be developed. But I'm, I'm also just here to say that it is a struggle, and I am here with you. Megan at TV. Email me anytime if you have suggestions or if you have questions or anything. This is not easy. No. Uh, and anyone who's parenting, anyone who's a guardian, an aunt, an uncle... Uh, I, I applaud you for whatever you're doing. I, I wish we still had like a mommy tech show. I really, I mean, seriously, it's hard. And I wish we could help the parents out there a little bit more. Yeah. But the, for the rest of the show, we're going to be talking about not, not, not parenting stuff. Yeah. Well, oh, well you have parenting I stuff. Have parenting you have stuff. Well, semi parenting <laughs> stuff. So I, I wanted to show a solution that was not per device because th this solution is great. This and Family Link, it allows you to reach into a device, turn on or turn off apps. That's good. But I'm, I'm a networking guy, I'm a, I'm a geek. I, I like to take a look a, a bit more at hardware. So Burke, if you go to that link, uh, uh, you've seen me show this off before, I love it, it's a great product. It's the Synology RT2600. Uh, and uh, this uh, right now, the price has actually come down. It used to be a $240 to $290 router, now it's $210. And it's really something you should take a look at because it does offer some advanced features that allow you to do some very cool things. Now, this is a quad-core Qualcomm IPQ8065 1.7 gigahertz processor. It's faster than the Broadcom chip that they had in the first one. It's got a, a gigabit WAN port, four gigabit LAN ports, one USB 3.0 port so you could plug hard drives into it, a USB 2.0 port in case you want to plug in something like a, a 3G or 4G modem, along with an SD card reader and 4x4 MIMO. So this is an incredibly competent router but what I want to take a look at is what I can do with the interface. And Burke, if you go to my computer, what we've got here is the standard interface for Synology SRM. This is their router operating system. And if I go into the control panel, what this gives me is the ability to block or restore individual user privileges. Now, this is an incredibly powerful system because it means that at any given time, I can allow certain devices to work, I can deny certain devices, I can limit the amount of data that certain devices can pull up. So for example, in parental controls, I can say, I've got a couple of devices registered on this right now. There's the parental unit, the child unit, and the inferior child unit. Aww. I know, but let's, let's be honest, it's gonna happen. And then I can, I can add a web filter. I can say, okay, there's certain, uh, what I would suggest is you do a, a whitelist instead of a blacklist. Don't say, block these sites. Say, block all the sites, but allow these ones. Much better way to do it, and it takes, again, more work. It's a bit of parenting, but it's far better than playing cat and mouse and trying to block off all the sites that maybe they shouldn't be visiting. I'm not big on web filtering. I kind of think that's a, parent, a parental thing. You kind of have to teach them how to be good, teach them how to take custody of their senses, make sure they're not going to places, because otherwise, when they're off your network, they'll do anything they want. However, you can also do traffic control, and traffic control is awesome. For example, I can go to the inferior, inferior child unit, and I can go ahead and edit this. Well, let me jump in here. And I have the ability to, uh, to ban it. I have the ability to give them speed. I have the ability to, to, to give them priority. So I, you know, if, if they are using up all the bandwidth in my house, I can say, hey, guess what? You're now limited to 100K. And it's going to give you a really bad streaming experience, but that's because you've been sucking down the bandwidth for every, everybody else. Um, I also have the ability to uh, you know, change the schedules at which they, uh, they are allowed to... Uh, to, to use the internet. So I can say, hey, you know what? For these times, you don't get to use the internet. Um, I, I, can, I can say, hey, after midnight, the internet turns off for you, and it doesn't turn on until 6 o'clock in the morning. I can set any custom schedule I want based on the device. Now, this I've shown off before, and this is kind of cool, but what's even better is the fact that I can do this over an app. Uh, so if you go to the overhead, Burke, these, these are the three phones. So this is the parental unit, this is the inferior child unit, and this is the, uh, the good child unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, into YouTube on each one of these. 
because that's that's what they're going to be watching. Let's go ahead and start up uh, a stream uh, for each one of these. Uh, you go ahead and do that. And, uh, we'll just hold on. Play. There we go. Uh, and then this is going to be my parental unit. So this is the the one that the par the parents would have. And I'm going to go ahead and go into the I'm going to go ahead and go into the DS router setup. Just stay in the overhead. This tells me that I've got four. Oh, you know what? I should probably turn this upside down. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> oh, stop that. I've got four. Oh no, no thanks. Four devices connected. And uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a parent late at night and I hear sounds coming from the other room because and I know that they're watching YouTube. What I can do is I can say, hey, you know what, inferior child. Guess what? Until further, uh, f I, I say further, uh, I'm going to go ahead and ban you, okay? Um, uh, 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 not, not now. I'm going to ban you. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to save it. And what, what will happen is on the inferior child unit, so let's say he tries to go to another video. Uh-oh. It's just going to start, see, it's, just, it's, it's playing off the current video, but it's not going to load anything else anymore. It's now been blocked off from the Internet. And that will stay that way until I unblock it. And I can do that, again, by device. Uh, and this will show me all the devices that are currently connected to my network. This will show me what kind of usage I'm getting. Uh, this, you know, this is such a powerful tool. And the cool thing about this is it's, it's built in. I mean... They didn't really expect this to be as good of a tool as it is, but it is a fantastic parental tool, especially since I can block entire ranges of devices. Um, so, yeah. And this, again, a little pricey, but the nice thing about this is there's no way to bypass it. Uh, it's not like they're going to figure out the, the master password and remove the app. This is the network that they're trying to use. Now, some people will say, oh, well, they'll just switch to cell cellular mm -hmm. data. And they can do that, but then they're eating up their cellular data, and they're going to feel that. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the problem with these because, you know, if you're blocking one thing, you're, you're blocking their devices, you're not blocking the Internet, they mm -hmm. could have a laptop, they could have another phone. But, yeah, that is, we don't have great cell uh, reception yep. inside our house, which... <laughs> Actually, that's kind of good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, go figure. Yeah, and there is, you cannot fool the router. I mean, that in interface will show you everything that's connected. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's not you and it's not your husband, well, you go, well, it's the kids. And this, you can even set alerts. You can say, hey, if... If after this time, I get suddenly there's like a lot of data streaming to my network, I'll say, oh, someone is streaming video. It's one o'clock in the morning. No one should be doing that. Ban. Right. Uh, that's kind of cool. Yes. I kind of like. It. Although it is mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I uh, my aunt uh, has had teenagers. They're now adults. But I remember when I was in my twenties, and I went over to her house, and she had still had AOL dial-up. <laughs> and I said, you know, you don't have to have that. Like, I could set you up. You could have fast internet. And she was like, I know. I don't want to have it because then my kids will spend all the time on this the is, internet. This is like, true. I, she, and I was like, oh, brilliant. I, I had a cousin ask me once, what did you do before you had the internet? And I'm like, I was thinking about it. I'm like, what did I do? I'm like, oh, my gosh. I would go outside. I would throw balls. I would build stuff. I would, like, drive little little bumper car. Oh, my good, I had an awesome childhood. And now you're indoors and playing video games. But we should also say, obviously, we Obvi both know this. That, yeah, yeah. That there's so many great things there that kids is. can do and build and make. So and, much knowledge. Yeah, yeah. and so the, you got to take the good with the bad. Exactly. Now, speaking of taking the good with the bad, when we come back, Megan is getting control freak over her house. You got a new house, mm -hmm. which is kind of awesome. But I mean, you're a tech person. You gotta, you gotta pimp that out. You gotta make it kind of technology oriented. You gotta make sure you can control everything. And since you're an iOS person, I'm, I'm thinking you're probably gonna want to use HomeKit. I, I do want to use HomeKit for mm -hmm. everything. For everything. Well, we're gonna get to HomeKit in just a bit. But first, let's take a moment to thank a sponsor of this episode of Know How. Hey, folks. Guess what? We live in a digital age. That's what we've been talking about this entire episode. Well, if you live in a digital age. You need to live in the digital age. That means you can't be using the outdated methods of exposing yourself to the world. You need WordPress. Now, this episode of Know How is brought to you by WordPress. Every day, millions of people go online to search for local businesses. Now, does your small business show up? When you create a website on WordPress, you can make it easier for your customers to find you, connect with you, and hear how you can help them. Your business needs an online home. It needs a WordPress.com website. You don't need prior experience. You don't need to hire someone to do it for you. WordPress.com guides you 
through the entire process from getting your uh, yourself started to putting some wonderful con uh, content, maybe pictures and videos of your trips, perhaps a portfolio of, of what you've done in the past. You can choose from hundreds of beautiful designs. You can boost your visibility with built-in search engine optimization and social sharing. You can activate other WordPress plugins for the functionality that your business needs. Best of all, with a WordPress.com plan, expert support is always there to help you focus on what matters. And that's growing your business rather than worrying about your website. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to get started today with 15% off any new plan purchase. Just go to WordPress.com slash knowhow. That's WordPress.com slash knowhow to create your website and find the plan that's right for you. That's WordPress.com slash knowhow for 15% off your brand new website. And we thank WordPress for their support of knowhow. And we're back. Megan, um, I've noticed that there's more stuff on the table. Yeah, I'm trying to recreate my home here. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, I'm seeing a power strip. I'm seeing uh, a couple of plugs. I'm seeing a lamp. Yes. By the way, is this, this lamp has, has, an, oh, has a name? Or no, the plug has a name. Well, yes, we'll get to that. Uh, his name is Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. Um, okay, so first let's start with uh, HomeKit is the hub oh, for... Yeah. Oh, lamp. We got lamps. We, yeah, know, we, we know how lamps work. Mm -hmm. We know how lamps work. Yeah. We can. Yeah. We'll just leave it on for now. Uh, can you see that? Can you see my home kit there, or is the light now? Have, do we not, not have that oh, camera anymore? Uh, this one? Yes. There we go. Ooh, okay. That looks so nice. this is the home app, and I've the Maroni Mansion. The Maroni I Mansion. Like this. And uh, I could set this up remotely. So I have the Schlag lock or Schlag. 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 Okay. Um, and I can control it either remotely if I set it up, but I don't have it set up remotely because I'm not sure how I feel about unlocking and locking my door remotely, uh, but I can unlock you it. You could. I could. You could. <laughs> and then we have uh, Steve here. You can see oh, that. Oh, hi, Steve. And a default light bulb. Okay, so a about a month ago, IKEA announced that they were going to make their lights, the Tradfear lights, or mm -hmm. Tradfear, Tradfear. Trad <laughs> HomeKit compatible. So um, I asked to test them, and they said, oh, yes, yes, they're HomeKit compatible. Actually, they're not. Uh, <laughs> yes. Actually, I've seen this so many times when they're like, oh, yeah, we'll support HomeKit, and then there's not even an attempt to support HomeKit. What, what's that about? Is I it just because it's not... A not really out and known yet? Or? I think that's the problem. Okay. I think that uh, people say, oh yeah, it works in your home. Like, I, I think they, <laughs> they want to assume that it uh, that it works. So this is, um, can you, where's the best place to, let's turn this off. Yeah. And you can see, it's just a smart light bulb from Ikea and um, it's a, dim, a dimming light bulb. Oh, got it. There okay. we go. So I, I took out the regular light bulb and I put it in there and we have this plugged in and then I have this um, little remote which I can, let's see, we gotta turn it on and then I should be able to turn it. Oh, there we go. So we can, okay. we can make it. Now, we've seen a lot of devices like this, like the Philips Hue, mm -hmm. which are you know, as little installation as possible. I'm not replacing a switch, I'm not plugging anything in. It's literally just unscrew the bulb and screw in a new one. Right. Now, this would be awesome if that's controllable by HomeKit, but you say not even not close. Not yet. They said, well, October. So I have to update soon. that before. Yes, uh, they said soon. So right, basically, I mean, this is great if your lamp is across the room and you want to put this by your bedside table and turn it off. But what you need now to make any lamp uh, HomeKit compatible is a smart plug. Yeah, pl yeah so I've seen are, a lot of these. There are many. There's the iHome. I had that somewhere here. Uh, the iHome. And the way you know that it's HomeKit compatible is it has this little... Um, the logo. The sticker. And then it has a little number there that I'm covering up. Because you don't want people to control yours. <laughs> May, no, I, I don't. Uh, and <laughs> that's so that's, kind the, of a that's thing. the iHome. It's basically just a plug. Um, but what you gave me, Padre, is the Koo Geek. Koo Geek. Koo Geek. But Koo Geek has a new name. Uh, I called him Steve, because that's what you can do. Let me show you. So I, I set this up, I entered the code, and then uh, I, let's see, did we turn this off? Oh, it's not plugged in. Yeah, there we go. Um, oh, yeah. We, so we then, got Steve Needs actual power. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Put him in there, and then uh, I can say, turn off Steve. Okay. Wait, oh. Siri! Oh, okay. okay, that's cool. Now I, I like Did that. you see that the light was on? So let's see. turn on Steve. Okay, the Steve is on. Wow, that works a lot better than I thought it would. Turn off Steve. Okay, the Steve is on. Watch this. No! Put your microphone near the boy or the speaker. 
turn on Steve. Oh, come on, Apple Watch. Okay, all right. Turn off Steve. That works a lot better than I thought it would. It's a little bit slow. I'm told by Serenity Caldwell, who has the Series 3 watch, the brand new watch, that it's faster. Because those are the right. kinds of things where I, you know, I can say I can unlock my home, lock my home, and then I'm just like, mm, I could have entered the code or pressed mm. the button. Uh, so you, they're That's not all called compelling. Steve. You can, uh, if you can take a look at my phone here, I'll show you how to edit. Um, uh, so you Steve. can yeah you can install a whole helm of these and you just give them different names right I, and it doesn't have to be Steve it could be turn on hallway one turn mm -hmm. off hallway two I'm gonna call him Padre oh so that's hi. good hey Padre so turn off Padre oh. okay the Padre I, I feel is like off. I've just been killed <laughs> <laughs> hold on no, don't take away my power so Megan. this this. Isn't I don't know if this is cheap. They're four, four for a hundred dollars. So actually, that's pack. not bad because I've I've seen these go as much as like forty five to fifty dollars for a single mm -hmm. one. Four in, a, a, a hundred dollars for a four pack. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, and I bet you could buy them one at a time. That was what they linked to me, but right. um, for me, but yeah, I bet you could buy. Well, I mean, because they understand that I mean, one is for testing, mm -hmm. but if you want to actually do something useful in the house, you're going to need a few of them. Right. Otherwise, there's that one lamp that you can turn on and off. Mm -hmm. now, now, you've had just a little bit of time to play with this. Uh, you know, is, is this any better than the other ones that you've played with? No, they're all pretty much they're the all, same. They all work the same. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's it comes down to price and style. Uh, you know, do I like this? And actually, I have to say, I prefer Steve over the blocky one. He that does. You have. Yeah, it does it look. Does nicer. look you a can buy it in black too. Ooh. Uh, the coat. Ooh, geek. The cool geek. The cool geek. Oh, oh, what? I mean, I noticed it's it's a three prong connector. Could I plug appliances into these things, or am I limited to lights? Uh, you can plug appliances into them. That's a really good probably question. not a refrigerator. Yeah, maybe not like a that. leaf blower. <laughs> Nothing that um, I I recently plugged a leaf blower into the wrong socket. I I didn't really understand that. Like, check your wattage yeah. of what your appliance yeah. is. What is that? Does it say? One hundred and twenty volt AC, eighteen hundred watts. So yeah. Oh my god. So I could plug an iron into this thing, and it's still going to be fine. That's hair not, dryer. That's not bad. Hair dryer. Some hair dryers. Some hair dryers will go all the way to like 2,400 watts. Because so. I would love be, to be like, turn off, Steve. <laughs> Siri couldn't hear you with the hair dryer going. <laughs> yeah, It'd be true. like, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you were trying to say. Yeah. You can also do it manually just by oh, pressing okay. the button. Okay. Um, it's just much more fun to tell Siri to turn oh, off Steve. I like it. Okay, <laughs> now this is the low end of HomeKit home automation. We go up a little bit and you can start dealing, dealing with things like, oh, I don't know, house heating, thermostat, mm -hmm. AC. What do I need for that? Well, uh, I recently tested the Ecobee Smart Home Thermostat oh, in my yes, parents' yes. house. That comes with the Amazon compatibility and also HomeKit compatibility. Does I have it do a Google little... or just Amazon and, and Apple? No, just okay. so. But not only, this was a, it was a really interesting product because not only could you say to your Amazon Echo, turn down the heat, turn up the air conditioning. Turn down you can, for what? You could say turn down for what? You could also ask the device the questions that you can ask your Amazon Echo. So you oh, could say, yeah, like, so the skills. Yeah, the play skills my are, flash oh. briefing or what's the weather or tell me a joke. Okay, so of course, that's cool, being able to control the HVAC. But what about, oh, I don't know, controlling appliances, I, my TV, my home entertainment system? Is, is that a home kit thing as well, or do I need to buy a separate unit for that? Well, if you have an Apple TV, you can oh, control works, it with yeah. that. And the Apple TV actually serves as the hub. Oh. Um, so that's your smart home hub where you can control it remotely. And maybe we'll have to do another episode on that because yeah. I haven't said you know that what? Up yet. I think, yeah, that's something that we could actually specialize because I want to get a lot of those products in. There are so many products that are coming in for HomeKit, for Google, and for Amazon's voice assistant that we could spend multiple episodes just going over the pros and cons of each. Now, all the devices, as you mentioned, they kind of work the same, so it's really going to come down to style. There will be a few lemons. We'll weed out the lemons. But, uh, yeah, this, this home automation stuff, it's actually way better than I thought it was. Because I remember when they were promising all this, and I thought, oh, yeah, it's going to work once out of every two times. That never failed. You know, Steve always turned on and off. Steve did. And I'm seeing the same thing out of, uh, out of Amazon and Google. In fact, Burke, if you go to the first link in my segment, uh, if you go to Amazon right now, there is an amazing number of devices that can be controlled by either Google Home or Amazon Alexa. They've, they've built two of them. Uh, go ahead and go to that link. Um, that, that's... It's, it's cool because you have everything from the individual sockets 
to you know things like temperature control to uh, you know to to lights. This if you just go and scroll up and down this thing, it's got everything, uh, and these can all work with both the Amazon Voice Assistant or Google Home, and some of them will even work with HomeKit, although they're they're far more expensive. Now, some of my favorites, and you don't have to bring up these links. There's the Tan the Tantan or Tantan Mini Smart Switch. It's a two pack for thirty two dollars, so it's even cheaper than than Steve. It will. It's again. It works exactly the same way. It's it's Wi-Fi connected. It will work with uh, iOS or Android. You cannot set it off with a desktop, uh, which is kind of strange for me. But yeah, if you've got an iOS or an Android device, you can operate it. There's the um, oh, I, I don't know how to say it. O I T T M. It's a, it's an outdoor switch. I was specifically looking for this because all of the ones that I've seen in the past. Uh, they only work indoors. I wanted something that wouldn't completely die uh, the minute I put it in the weather. This is pretty good. It's not it's not waterproof, but it's weather resistant. And what I love about this is there's a skill that you can use with Amazon's voice assistant that lets you monitor how much power you're using. So sometimes if I want to put something outside and maybe just make sure it's not sucking down too much power off my grid, that's built in. That's just a skill I go ahead and install. Uh, last bit, and everyone has seen this, Sylvania smart bulb, bulbs. Again, super easy to install, but they're a bit pricey. And you know, these are on the lower end of the spectrum. There's two of them for 70 bucks. It gives you a bit more than just on or off. This will also let you control hue and color and brightness, which is cool. But again, that's you know, it's a little pricey just for light bulbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, can you imagine replacing every bulb in your house with a $35 bulb? No. Probably not. No. Yeah, and Leo, Leo tried to do it, and what ended up happening is when there's a glitch, like when he had a power outage, all the lights turned on full brightness in the middle of the night. It was, that doesn't sound great. That doesn't sound smart. No, no, no. not really, no. not really. I think that we should do more of this because I think we're a good team on this because I am the one that gets oh, super yes. excited. Mm -hmm. Like, I can unlock my my house, <laughs> my front door with my watch. And then you are the one that says, here are the thousand reasons why That's it's a bad super idea. dangerous to unlock here. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Someone will come into your house and take all your stuff, Yes, so. including Steve. Mm-hmm. Steve. Steve. Poor Steve. Uh, folks, when we come back, we've got one last bit of advice for the control freak out there. I know that you've been collecting your digital memories, your photos, your videos. Well, Megan and I want to take you through a couple of tips and tricks so that you can better organize them. You'll know, remember them into the future. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and take another break to thank a sponsor of this episode of Know How. Now, this episode is brought to you by Hover. Now, what are you passionate about? Do you have an idea for a business? Are you launching a creative project? Buying a domain name is the first and biggest step to building your brand online. It's all about location, location, location. Just like a regular business, if you don't have a good domain, a good address, something that's snappy, something that people can come to, you might as well not exist, and not existing on the internet is not really an option. Hover has over 400 domain extensions to choose to help you brand yourself. That's a lot of choices to help you find the perfect domain name that fits your business, your tone, that fits you. Now, if you're a blogger or a company trying to create new leads or inform your customer base, you can use .blog instead of a generic .com or .biz domain name. By using .blog, you're telling everyone to expect impactful content about your topic or business rather than a generic homepage. Now, .blog domains are on sale at Hover for the entire month of October for just $8.99. That's 70% off your first year. Now, whatever your interest may be, Hover has an extension for you. Dot tech, dot photo, dot security. And you know what else is great about Hover? It's got best in-class customer support and no upsells. Now, the Hover Connect feature allows you to connect your domain name to any host or website builder with just a few simple clicks. No more hunting down MX records and trying to make sure that you're directed to the right place. Hover takes care of it. They've also got personalized email that matches your domain and further supports your online identity. So show the online community who you are and what you're passionate about. Just go to hover.com slash twit and get 10% off your first purchase. That's hover.com slash twit. And we thank Hover for their support of know-how. Okay, Megan, let's get back to the uh, control freak. I'm, okay. I'm feeling kind of freaky here. I, I need to do something with my photos. You and I both know that with the advent of the, of the mobile device, we've got more photos and videos than ever because we can take photos and videos wherever we are. We always have a very competent camera with us 
But I, I don't know about you, but I get a little exhausted trying to sort everything. I get overwhelmed by everything. There's so many photos. Uh, just because I can take a photo, I do. And uh, my new iPhone has a great camera yes, and does. has 256 gigs of memory. Which so you I, have to fill. If you I, don't fill it, I I mean, fill you're, it. you're losing. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I have to fill. I'm a, I'm a bit of a digital hoarder, I yeah. must admit. Yeah. So I use, we both use Google Photos. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you talk about that um, okay. because that's something we both use. Uh, only I use Apple Photos because... Because yeah, you're in yeah. the iOS. OS world. Mm -hmm. um, so here Aww. are all my Aww. photos. Um, here's a video of no. my snake no. eating. Do not. Oh. Oh. You, I see. I knew <laughs> you were going to do this. I know. I know. Uh, so then it also has this memories feature, which um, Google has as well. But look at this. It show, For some reason, it knew how much I missed our old friend Aww. Kara and showed me all these pictures. Now, of does, her. It, does it do this automatically or did you assemble that? I know it did it all. Okay, so yeah, so this it is yeah, like heart. the moments. Okay, it got knew it. knew that here's this woman Aww. who you haven't seen in a while. You should call her um, because she'll do weird things like um, play <laughs> with a phone on the top of her head. Uh, so it'll play the best of last week, last weekend. Um, it'll play last year. And uh, I, oh, all my fluffy Aww. friends, not just my dog, but Aww, Brian's dog and Gilbert and. Uh, it just, and you can easily, and there, yeah. Oh, there's, there. there's Turbs. Mm-hmm. Uh, it obviously knew how much I miss Turbs, too. And it'll even play videos for you with music. I think I have the music turned off, but I just love it. It's not going to really um, help me control it, but it helps me enjoy. You know, I, I remember the first time I saw both the Apple and the Google version of this auto collage, it just blew me away. I'm like, yes, do something with those photos mm -hmm. and videos that I've taken. And then, and then I can send that out. Yes. Uh, it, it was amazing the first, although I have to say, I've heard the same music over and over so yeah. many times, I'm getting a little tired mm -hmm. of it. Mm. Okay, should I move on or do you want to talk about Google Photos now? No, 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 go, okay. go, yeah, let's, let's get through this. Here's somewhat, this something cool. that you introduced me yes. to, the Kingston Bolt. This is a little device, it's a little, it's USB on one side and lightning on the other. And I could put this in my iPhone or my iPad and then offload some pictures. So if you happen to be on a vacation and you fill up your your uh, storage, you just stick this in the lightning. It comes up as a, as a storage device. Right, and then you allow, I downloaded the Bolt app, so that's what it's opening. And then I can transfer. Oh, I like that, it auto launches. Yeah, I can transfer, I can actually take pictures right onto that, so. Oh, um, that is great, because I know a lot of people, they'll do video, and if I have a device attached, and I can just go straight into that video, and then I can pull that device in and plug it into my laptop mm -hmm. and just transfer it off, that's amazing. Yes. That's cool. Okay. Or like, let's say you're going to take pictures of a gift that you were going to buy, some, yep. something you want to keep secret. I'll let you use your yeah. imaginations to think about <laughs> all the photos you might want to keep secret. Something you don't want on the actual the, device. The example okay. I was going to show, tell you was a gift you're going to buy for your wife, but, or your partner. Or a mouse of <laughs> my Or snake. yes. Yeah, that I, I wanted okay. to. So I can uh, I'll view the photos. I can transfer photos. So all I have to do is I can transfer all, which will take forever because I have a ton. Uh, just the photos, just the videos, just my favorites, or I can select a few. So I can just go through, um, and it will. Uh, let's see. I'll Give pick you your the inventory. Picture of my and aunt and oh. her snake. My snake. Um, this picture of what's your snake's like, name, by the way? Murphy, but oh, also hey, her Murphy. name is Sheila. Oh, Sheila! And then I just press transfer, and it says you could delete those items or keep them. I'm gonna keep them, and then it just transfers there. Oh, I have to get that from my mom. She's always complaining, and she doesn't like she doesn't like syncing to the cloud. I don't know why, but that's her thing. You've and that's her well. perfect. That's perfect. Is it plug it in? Yep. Transfer it over. You're good to go. And then yeah, here's all the photos that I've transferred on my iPhone and my iPad. Um, there's a ton of them. So now this is all that was all GoPro videos that you never know what to do with all that. Here's a picture of my boys when they were little. So it's like you've got it all. They weren't that little. They were so they have something like this for Android devices. It's an OTG on one side and USB three on the other. And I use it all the time, but it doesn't have an auto app because it just treats it like regular storage. And I have to say, those are my favorite devices. They've they've actually replaced most of my USB storage devices because it's multi-purpose. I can use it as a standard USB stick, but it also interfaces with my mobile device. That's, yeah, I want multi-functionality. That's awesome. How, how much does that cost? So that's the Bolt? The That is the Bolt, and it's $60 uh, for, I think, uh, can you click on that link, Burke? 
under the bolt from Kingston. Um, it's pr yeah, probably like the 128 gigabyte version or maybe the... 56 gigabytes? Or 60, 60, 64, um, 60, 64, 128, or if you go ahead and move over to that link. Yeah, $60, but for how much If you space? scroll down, there you go. Bye now. You're so... That's okay, okay, so they have 32, uh, 64, and 128. So, yeah, the one, Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah pick, pick your size, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so here's my um, biggest piece of advice about your photos. If mm -hmm. you're going to really enjoy them, get them off of your phone yes. and your computer mm -hmm. and put them on your walls. Put them uh, in your space. Let you put, make a book. Just get them off of here and out into the world. Into That's the real what I world. Say. Into the so real people world. can actually see them without having to look at your phone. Yes, okay. e exactly. So here um, is, this is a digital photo frame. Now you've heard of digital photo frames. This is not new. This one, this one is relatively new. It's called Photo Spring. And you, you know, it has a battery, Ooh, a a rechargeable battery. So, and it has a charging station. So I can just hold it in my lap and pass it around if I want, or I can. That's a. So this is a coffee table stand. This is supposed to sit next to a, like sofa, and yeah. people can just see your photo. That's actually kind of a cool design. And so you can uh, easily tap to stop the uh, the the slideshow and have your control and look at. Um, let's see, look at my playlist. I'm going to go through all my photos. Maybe it does videos as well, so I could scroll through that if. I wanted to, and then I could start it again. You can also hide certain pictures if they come up. Yep. <laughs> you can just put certain pictures on there. I don't just know, saying. pictures of the, okay. the yep. object that you're going to buy your partner sure. as a gift yep. that you wouldn't want them to see. <laughs> um, you can also, here is my favorite thing about the, the photo spring, uh, is you can add, you can email pictures. So let's say you bought this for your mom. Right. And you wanted to take pictures oh, and send them to her. You can okay. send them directly to the phone with the photo spring app. So it's my, my mom would right love place. this for the grandkids. Like, oh, take a photo of mm -hmm. and send it to my picture frame. Okay, so here, look, I have too many devices. So here's the Photo Spring app, and I can just click send photos, and then I will look at my favorites and go through there. And uh, what pictures do I want to? Let's see. Oh, Definitely the picture of the dog yawning. And Dex, definitely the video of the snake. Of Murphy. Actually, that might take too long to transfer. But this photo that you loved so much of the snake <sighs> in the mid middle of eating. So why does it have to be snakes? <laughs> then it's going to look for my frame, and it sees there's my frame because I've connected to it, and I evidently chose these three photos. And then I click the frame. I've chosen the frame. And confirm it. And confirm. And then I could give it a title uh, if I wanted to. Snake. <laughs> Just takes Snake. every opportunity. Okay. And then send it, and your items are on the way. And then they would go to the frame. And the next thing I know is... They're there somewhere. Oh. Image uploaded successfully, so then we would find them. And, uh, and if this was just running in, in uh, just standard slideshow mode, it would just get added to the rotation. Yep, it would. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, because I, I interviewed, I reviewed the first generation of picture frames, and they were okay, but they were slow, they were clunky, and they looked horrible. These are these were so much better. So PhotoSpring is relatively new. I really like it. Yeah. I like that you're able to um, send photos to it. There's still a few kinks to work out, and they said that in, I think, December, you'll be able to send your mm -hmm. Instagram photos right there or your Facebook photos right there. It'll in integrate with your social media, which is nice, because you've already chosen those photos right. as your favorite, right. so it'll just go straight there. And this is $150. So I've been thinking about my holiday gift list, and this might be on it. Um, mm, all right, all right. Okay, and then put them on your walls. I have used several services. I have a whole wall devoted to uh, my photos, but a, a service that I really like is called Mesh Canvas from Printage. Ooh. And I took my photos, and oops, that might, actually might be better to hold it up like this. And this was one photo I took of the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, okay, I see what that. And then... Yeah, if with Carl the Fog is in there too. Yes, and and then they stick to the wall. They're foam core, 
So that's actually and then yeah, cool. you would hang I them like on that. your wall like with a little bit of room. In and, there. and yeah, actually, yeah, what, what you, you would space them apart yes. so you get that artistic look. Yeah, let's go to the, the go to the website that's the there, broken the mesh canvas look. website. They, that's they, nice. You can see what it looks like. Now, do you do you get to like give them one picture and then you say I want it divided here, mm -hmm. here? And, oh, yes. nice, 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 nice. Um, so it was forty six dollars for those three, and then if you wanted to order more, they are ten dollars each. So it's not just a photo, it's a work of art. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, and so that's what um, they look like. Uh, that doesn't work too well for me just because I'm always moving and I don't have a lot of like, shared yeah. space. But no, I could see why that is so much better than either keeping the photos on your device or even a digital picture frame. It, it just kind of takes up space and gives it a nice feel. And these stick, these stick and remove. Like I remove these from my wall and then I'll stick them back on my yeah. wall and it doesn't damage the wall. So Well, I used, to do, I used to do work like this all the time. I, I loved spending time in our dark room and I would mount everything on foam core, so that kind of brings back memories. So I think I think that is all I have. All right. Well, let me um, let me do one more because we both use Google Google Photos. In fact, I think a lot of people use Google Photos. It's available on both Google and uh, on Android and iOS. And uh, you know, there's there's a couple of tips that you should use that you you have to enable because it makes the experience so much cooler. Uh, so first of all, if we go into Google Photos, I'm going to drop my app in here really quickly. You need to make sure that you are set up to sync properly. Uh, so you have to, uh, first of all, enable the sharing. It's not automatic. Uh, most of the time, it, it's, it's set up to not transfer over your cellular data, which is good, but you're going to need to tie it into your, your Google account. So once you install it, and again, available on both Android and iOS, you're going to go into memory, uh, into the, uh, sorry, into the menu. You're going to go into settings, and then you're going to go into backup and sync. And this is where you can tie it into your, uh, your individual, actually, let me zoom in the camera here a little bit more just so that people can see. You're going to tie it into the account that uh, you're going to be using. And that determines where your storage is, is going to end up. You also need to choose your upload size. Now, hopefully most of you know this, but I can choose between the original size and high quality. If I choose high quality, I get an unlimited amount of photos. I, I can upload all the photos and videos I want, but I'm giving Google the permission to sort of scale them down. So it's not maximum resolution. It's still very good. And it's great if you're just posting on like Facebook and Twitter, but it's not as great as it could be. The other option is original. And if you choose original, what's going to happen is it's going to use up the quota. So I get 15 gigabytes of free space. I can buy more, but if you start uploading original size videos and photos, you will very quickly use that up. So I, I tend to just use original, uh, uh, high quality. And I'll, I'll actually download a copy off the phone into a separate storage folder in case I ever need the, the super high resolution versions again. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is in sharing. So if you go to the sharing uh, seg section, where did that go? Oh, wait, go back one. Uh, if you go into sharing, you actually get to turn on and off geotagging. Uh, this is kind of important because this determines whether or not people will see where you took the photo. Now, even if I turn this off, it will still upload location data to Google Photos because I want to be able to organize my photos by where I took them. But if I don't turn on this feature, remove the tag, it means if I ever share it with anybody, they can actually get like where you were and on what day and what time. Uh -huh. I'm not okay with that. Most of the time that's fine because if I'm sharing it with people, it means I'm cool. But all it takes is one time where you like share out to Twitter and suddenly everyone's got like a location and a, a tag. And if that's your house, that's not good. Uh, so yeah. That is good advice. Yeah, just, I, I, and unfortunately, one of my just brothers didn't, she's like, oh yeah, if I put a share it, it's fine. And so people knew where he lived, which meant he knew where all of us lived, which that was weird. That was, yeah, you don't want people showing up. Uh, okay, now here's the other thing. Once you've gone ahead and uploaded, what you need to do is you have to enable uh, facial recognition and Burke Via, come back out. Uh, go ahead and go to my, uh, my computer. And uh, what we need to do is we need to turn on face grouping. So you go to menu and uh, you're gonna go into uh, photos. Here we go. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, wait, I, I, I need to get in the settings. Settings, where'd you go? Um, oh, there we go. Settings. Here, I, I can do this. Group similar faces. This is one of the most awesome features in Google Photos. And unfortunately, this is turned off by default. If I, if I allow face grouping, what it will do is Google will have the ability to, to go through all of my photos and start putting together pictures of people that it thinks are the same person. 
um, which is awesome. Also, this, uh, allow context to recognize your face. It's sort of like allowing the opposite. It's only fair. If I'm going to start grouping people, I should let people start grouping me. But once I've done that, I can jump into my albums and under people, this was all done by Google. I did not have to do any of this grouping. And as you can tell, what it's done is it's now collected all of the photos that it thinks are my dad, or it's collected all the photos that it thinks are my Jesuit brother, uh, Father Lung No. Uh, it's grouped together all of you know my sister, my mother, and for the people that it doesn't know, um, it allows me, so say down here, uh, like, oh, look, Alex is here, but it doesn't have a name on him. So I can put, who is this? Alex Gumpel. Uh, gum, Gumbel. Yes, Alex Gumbel. And now that's tagged. And the cool thing about that is anytime I search for Alex Gumbel, it will, Gumpel, it will know that those are his photos. And I can go through my entire inventory of photos and all these people that I know, all my family members, all my loved ones, and it will just it will bring them up. It's, it's an incredibly good feature, uh, but it's not turned on by default. Uh, and here's the other cool thing about that. Uh, Google the, the photos, it also gives you other groups. So yeah, places, this is set by location. So it's looking at the actual uh, geo data. And this is why it still wants the geo data even if you don't want to share it out. So it's, it's dividing my, um, my trips by where I've gone. So there's San Francisco, Portland, Petaluma, Milbrae, Rome, San Mateo, uh, Rabat, uh, Paradise, Mountain View. And it's, it's kind of a cool way to go back and say, oh yeah, I remember, I, I was there, I, I remember that. And it will also do things and videos. So I can start looking for things like dogs or Father's Day or Reese or boats or sunsets. This is all built into Google's recognition algorithm. Uh, and I gotta say, it's probably one of the most powerful things that Google does. And most people don't realize it's there, it's free. Yeah. It's free, Megan. It is so smart. It's creepily smart. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you're like, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. I don't know. Well, you know what? We're going to have to revisit this because we, I mean, we're way out of time, but we ran through this ramshod. There's a lot more we can do with home automation. There's a lot more that we can do with parental control. And there's a lot more that we can do with tips, like practical tips for people who want to control their digital life. Are you willing to come back on and... I think so. I yeah. think maybe I should have listened to you and like done one? I think so. I think you should have listened to me because I had a lot more to say on all of these topics. Mm. Megan, Megan is smarter than me, uh, folks. We, we've heard it here. Anyway, folks, we know that this was a lot of information and uh, we want to make it easier for you to, to do everything that we've just done on the show. Don't forget, you can always find our show notes at our show page, twit.tv slash kh. Now, if you go there, not only can you find all our back episodes, but you can also find the subscription menu. menu. Drop it down, get an audio version, a video version, or a high definition video version. It's one of the best ways to share know-how and make sure that we can continue bringing you all the maker DIY goodness well into the future. Also, don't forget that we're on the social, specifically on Google+. Just go to Google+, look for know-how. There you will find us. There's a very short approval process so I can keep the spam accounts out. But once you're in, you get access to almost 12,000 kitas. Those are our know-it-alls. People at all stage of their maker DIY journey, you can ask questions, answer questions, share your knowledge, or share with us pictures and videos of your projects because we love to show them off here on the show. Also, you can find us on the other socials that I really like, which is Twitter. You can find me at twitter.com slash PadreSJ. Megan Maroney on Twitter. Yeah, and you can find the third member of our group uh, with mad finger switching Burke McGurk. Uh, Burke, where do they find you? Okay, they find you in the darkness. You can find Burke at the darkness at twitter.com slash A-N-E-L-F-3. Until next time, I am Father Robert Balliser. And I am Mother Megan Maroney. Mm, and now that you know how, go organize and control, control everything. Yeah, control, control everything. everything and everything. Go do that.